Welcome everybody. My name is Kyle Houchins. I'm a tech and a trainer for McNeil and this is Getting Started Rhino 7 Woo for Windows. Uh, today we're going to build uh, this guitar or as much of this guitar as we can get through in an hour, hour and a half. And um, the the I may actually look at this shape. I may actually look at a second shape, which is a pillow top guitar as well. And we can talk about the difference between the two. Um, and I want to talk about we're going to build most of this out of sub -Ds. I was mentioning that before, but um, we're going to build most of this out of sub -Ds, But we're also going to talk about where to use sub -Ds, where not to use sub -Ds, how to use some sub -D with the plan of, you know, converting to NURBS and then using NURBS tools later, um, how those pieces all start to fit together. The goal of this, right, the paradigm I always try and use is wood chop. If we we're going to build this guitar in a wood shop and all we had was a table saw, <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's say sub D was a table saw. Um, it'd be an awesome table saw, but it's just, let's just say it's a table saw. You could only get, you know, you could only build, you know, so good of a guitar, right? It, it would probably not have these great forms and stuff like that on it. It would probably be more straight and all that kind of stuff. But if you've got a bandsaw and a sander and grinders and, uh, chisels and drills and all sorts of stuff, right? You can you can build all of these various forms, right? Because table saws make great straight cuts and grinders make nice smooth edges and band saws make nice wiggly cuts and all that kind of stuff, right? So we want to think about Rhino as an entire shop full of tools and not get hung up on, um, you know, I have to use sub D for everything, right? I said, I, was, I used to be the tech and the trainer for T-splines if you if you have been around that long. Um, and when we put T-splines out, I, I saw a, um, a tendency of people to get hung up on sub D and say, everything's gotta be sub D. No, 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 no. <laughs> use sub D for what it's good for, you know, use a screwdriver to put in screws. Don't use a hammer to put in screws. <laughs> you can put a screw in with a hammer, but it's not the right tool for that job. So let's, let's, keep everything in perspective and even though sub D is new and shiny and fantastic and wonderful we want to we want to keep you know uh focused on the fact that we want to use the entire shop and we want to use all the stuff that, that does you know what it's supposed to do so if you're new to these getting started videos the the whole plan about this is um not necessarily to be training i don't necessarily expect you to follow along with me um live here because we're going to try and move pretty quickly the the goal would be for you to take notes and then when we get it posted up on our YouTube later, you can go and uh, and check it out there and then and then peruse it at your leisure. So um, so let's with that, let's go ahead and get started. This is a sketch that I just kind of threw together um, a couple days ago and have been pondering it a bit in the back of my mind, but I haven't done any building on this yet. Um, I did find an awesome electric guitar on GrabCAD and I stole some I stole some bits from it. So I am going to. I, I don't usually Julia Child uh, demos and, and say, turn on a layer and say, and we're done. <laughs> but in this case, I'm going to steal it. And I want to give credit to the designer who built this, a guy named Alex Alvarez. And this is his page here is grabcad.com slash Alexandra Alvarez hyphen two. He's the guy who built the the guitar that I took these bits from. And I just wanted to say thank you for that awesome guitar. Uh, it's a... Uh, on GrabCAD if you want to check it out. Um, with that, let's go ahead and get rolling. I start almost all my models the same way by bringing in a picture frame or a picture. And let's go ahead and start from scratch on that. So I'm going to just delete this, go to the front view. I'm going to run the picture command. That's how we get this rolling. I find my folder where it lives and I just bring it into space. And in this case, since I've got bits. I'm going to line it up with those bits and I'm going to scale it appropriately. And then that way we can kind of work from there. So I'm going to kind of just do that and we're going to mush this stuff around later. So I'm not going to sweat it too much, but kind of just put it somewhere in the neighborhood. So later on, we're not like, you know, crazy out in space. So I'm going to hide that stuff again. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this and shove it back a little bit out of the model space. And the reason that I do that is um, 
I don't like this. I don't like when I build a part and it bisects the image like this. That's you know it's pretty difficult to try and work with. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take this image and I'm just gonna slide it back here in space. That way I can see what's going on, but it's not you know it's not stuck in the middle of my model. Once I get it back in space a little bit, I'm gonna go to my properties. I'm gonna go to the materials. And then I'm going to just drag the transparency up a little bit to dim it out. So that way, when I trace over it, I can still see my line work. And then the last thing I'm going to do is go back to my layers. And then I'm going to lock that. Make sure that it's on that layer. And then that way, I can work over it without selecting it so far. OK, everybody still with me? All right, so how do we, how do we start thinking about this? And one of the, one of the things that I want to talk about is designing in Rhino. I don't want to talk about modeling in Rhino. Modeling is like, you know, when, when people say, oh, you're a modeler. Eh, yeah, <laughs> I am. I do modeling, but I'm really a designer who models. And that's the, that's the goal here is I want to make sure that everybody is designing in 3D, right? And, and the sketch is great, but we all know that we can lie, cheat, and steal on a sketch. And, and when it comes down to it, sometimes there's some magical thinking in sketches it doesn't translate to 3d and so the goal is to be able to work in rhino and use the tools efficiently enough so that you can make your evaluations and make your design decisions on the model and then decide exactly what it is you want to try and build and and make you know informed and educated decisions about about that now before we get started i want to talk about transitions um, not only in curves and surfaces but in in sub d and in a curve, I like to refer to this as the rule of three, right? So we've got the start part of the curve, and then we want to make a transition. We want it to turn the corner, right? And so I need three points to turn a corner. And that is that is what I refer to as the rule of three. And I either made that up myself or I stole it from somewhere. I've been doing this so long, I can't remember anymore. So um, the goal is to understand that if you move the three points that make the corner closer together, they make a sharper corner. If I move them farther apart, it makes a softer corner. And this seems like kind of an elemental thing, but it's, it's, you know, it, it's, it's really important to understand because what we don't want to do is this. We don't want to turn a corner like this, right? That is not a good corner. And in sub D, the temptation is to just start machine gunning surfaces and patches together in order to get, you know, these shapes that you want. And they're more and more complex, and then they get more and more difficult to handle. In the same way that getting this curve, this corner right here to be smooth is going to be virtually impossible because I'd have to actually go and line all of these points up by hand. Whereas this transition here, this curve, this corner, is much easier to make smooth because I've only got three points and I'm letting Rhino do the work here, right? So the corner here is going to be much smoother than this one is because all of these points, every single point that's on this curve is another opportunity for inflection or a dent or a bump or whatever. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so the same thing applies to sub D. And if I go to the sub D tools and let's just start with making a single plane. And I'm going to just do it one by one. We're just going to do a single sub D patch. And if I hit the tab key, that takes us into box mode. Right. So in this case, if I go to perspective view, you can see that I don't have any, any opportunity to bend a corner, right? Because I've only got how many points? I've got one, two points. Now, if I extrude an edge off of this, shift control click and then drag the extrude dot, I've got one, two, three points, right? Now, what do we know about three points? Three points makes a corner. And so I can pull either this individual point, right? Or I can control shift click the edge and pull it like this. And if I hit the tab key, look what happens. It turns the corner. Now let's take that out one more, one more level and let's take this and let's extrude one more this way and one more this way so that we can kind of mimic what we had on this curve, right? This is our first point. These are the three points that make up our corner. And then this is the this is the lead out point. All right. So we'll say this 
and this are the same, and we'll say this, and this are the same. And then these guys in here are these. Okay, does that make sense? I wanna, I wanna make sure that everybody understands this is all familiar stuff if you've done NURBS modeling. You know how this works already, all right? And so if I wanna make, let's go to tab key. If I, if I wanna make this corner tighter, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna grab these points, right, this guy. And I'm going to control shift click the edge that selects the edge, which essentially selects both points, right? And I'm going to pull this closer. I'm going to do the same thing here. And look what happens. That edge tightens up. See that? Very familiar. If I pull them farther apart, what happens? It gets a lot softer, right? Very familiar. So this rule of three <clears throat> is a very important thing to try and understand because it directly applies to sub D. Anytime you make a curve or a corner or a transition, you have to have three edges, okay? Now you can steal edges, right? And in this case, if I do a demo like this, if I make a curve that looks like this, Okay, you'd say, well, you're only placing one point in the corner. Well, that may be true, but if we look at it, this corner right here is made up of one, two, three points. This corner here is made up of one, two, three points. This one is made up of one, two, three. See that? So we can steal a point from another corner, but it's still three points that makes a transition. Now, just because I'm stealing, I'm stealing this point from this transition, right? This group, this one, two, three, I can steal that for this one. That's fine. Okay. And we can keep that same ideal in, in sub D. And if I were to make a sub D from this, I could copy this exact same point layout and you would get the exact same shape, right? If you place the points in the exact same place, you're gonna get the exact same shape out of the sub D because it's placed that way, okay? Now, if I have to isolate a corner, if I have to have a corner isolated, because what happens, look, if I, if I take, if I wanna modify this corner, one, two, three, right here, and, and that means I have to affect that one, that one, and that one, right? So if I take this and I say, okay, I want this corner to be sharper, that means I gotta pull down here and I gotta pull over here. Well, I made that corner sharper, but I also disturbed the points that make up the other parts of the, of the line, right? So in order to isolate that, I need to have three points dedicated to each specific corner. And, um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a point and then I'm gonna say one, two, three, right? That's its own corner. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna isolate it and then one, two, three, and then I'm gonna come up here and isolate it. One, two, three, all right? So let's look at the point structure on this. So now I can affect everything over here. Actually, I don't even need this point. Let's get rid of this one. I added an extra. So I can take this entire corner and I'm gonna do whatever I want with it and it doesn't affect this corner over here, right? I mean, it does, but not like, you know, violently, okay? And if I left that additional point in there, let's put that guy back. If I left this additional point in there, then I could do whatever I wanted over here and see how it's not even, it's not affecting this one at all. So you need to understand this kind of rule of three, this one, two, three, in order to be able to, to isolate. So if I want a corner here and I want a corner here, I probably need to have an edge in between them somewhere in order to be able to isolate this, right? I can scale this together and make it tighter. I can scale it apart and make it softer and it doesn't affect this. So I can either share points over here and make very soft transitions or I can isolate points and keep them separated over here and make different transitions. And everybody's like, okay, we get it, shut up. So the, the point I'm trying to make here is in this guitar, and let me turn the, the, the visibility up on this a little bit so we can talk about it, is this has got some transitions in it. Right, I'm kind of envisioning that 
and we'll see how this works out. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm kind of envisioning that this is going to be kind of like a little scoop, like, you know, this is going to kind of have a section like that, and then it's going to kind of be flattish through here, and then possibly have another section through there. And so that I get this kind of highlight line around there. That's the plan. We'll see how this works. But that, that's, that's my goal. And so if I think about that, what I need to keep in mind that in order to have this transition, how many edges am I going to need in my sub D right here? I'm going to need one to hold the edge. I'm going to need one transition for the center so that I can decide whether it's going up or down. And then I'm going to need one to hold the edge on the other side, right? So one, two, three, one, two, three. If this is going to be flat, I only need two. But if it's going to have a little bit of crown on it, I'm going to need three here as well. So with that in mind, let's talk about, let's actually quit talking and start modeling. All right. So let's go back here. I'm going to drop. Let's remember how to use Rhino. I'm going to pull this up a little bit. Go back to my layers and then lock it. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay this out using, uh, my goal is I could lay this out with a single patch and go extrude, 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 extrude. That's a pain. Let's not do that. Let's go to a curve. <clears throat> Let's check this sub D friendly toggle here, which means that if I do something with this curve, it's going to have a sub D result instead of a NURBS result. That's an important distinction to understand. And let's go ahead and just draw this inner shape. Again, one, two, three, right? So there's my next corner is going to be down here. My next corner is up here. And then I may need two there. So let's turn the points on and talk. One, two, three, that's my first corner. One, two, three, that's my next corner. One, two, three, that's my next corner. One, two, three, that's my next. One, two, three, that's the final. I didn't do eight for the corner. Don't do eight. Three. You only need three. And the reason for that is your curves will be infinitely smoother, cleaner, and easier to work with. So let's just do a quick, a quick little edit here to get a little closer to my original drawing. I'm going to use nudge on the points. And looks like actually might need a little bit more opacity on this because I'm old and blind and can't see very well. <laughs> so let's do this. I'm going to turn this up a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. That I think I can make out. That's my... There we go. All right. So I was missing that by a mile. So let's pull this down here like this. And then let's pull this up here like that. And then I'm going to use nudge. And then the one thing I would say about using fewer points is you have to pull them farther to make them do more work. And that's fine. You want to do that, right? So we're going to call that good. I can also see like where Rhino is doing a much better job of generating the spline than my shaky coffee addled wrist did when I drew it. All right, so I feel pretty good about that as an internal curve. So I'm just going to hide my points by hitting the escape key. And then what I'm going to do to generate the curve for the outside, because basically I want to loft and make a patch between these two sections, I'm going to copy and paste this. And it doesn't that doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense because the shape is, is vastly different. But the point that I, I want to make by doing this is my points match. Okay, see this? They're all... I have the same number of points in, in approximately the same locations. And so as I adjust this, when I make my loft, the, the loft is going to happen much more organically and much more, much more nicelier. <laughs> it's, not a word. it's not a word. Um, anyway, it just makes it easier if the points on your on your curves match when you do lofting because then Rhino doesn't have to try and figure out like what in the world you're trying to do, right? It just says, oh, these points match here and these points match here and these points match there. And it just does it a little bit easy instead of having to fight with it. All right. So, and the other thing too is it's, it tends to be pretty easy to edit because family of shapes tend to kind of go together. And so if you copy one curve, it tends to be easier 
I don't know if you, in your art school, they talked about family of shape, but in mine, we spent a lot of time talking about family of shape. Tom Molino, where, where are you? My design theory instructor when I was a sophomore, a hundred years ago. All right, so that gives us our shape and you can see where my line was a little flat here where my wrist kind of choked on me. That's a much nicer shape that Rhino's giving me than my wrist did. So I'm gonna go with that instead. So now that I've got these two curves laid out, I can come up here to the sub D palette and I can go to the sub D loft, which is here, and it goes boop and it makes that patch. And I can play with the, num the number of segments. I can add or, or remove segments, but I don't need any more than I have. So I'm not gonna adjust it. I'm gonna leave it like that because the shapes are holding really close to what I want, but I am gonna add a division between shapes because I need three points, right? I've only got two right now, so let's add one more. So what this now allows me to do is I can grab this edge, shift control click, shift control click, double click to get the whole edge. I can now pull this edge in or out and look what happens. I get a beautiful transition right there. See that? And I can control this transition by pulling this closer or farther away, right? All looking, all looking familiar? Um, what is the toolbar that you use? This one, the middle mouse button? That's a custom middle mouse button that I made. If you wanna make your own custom middle mouse button, um, you should have a default if you pop it up, grab it by this little blue bar here and dock it, and then use the control key and drag any of the tools into here that you want. Don't use the shift key because that's move and you'll actually pull them out of the palette that they were in originally. You wanna use the control key, click and drag, put them over here. And then that way you can build your own pop-up. Okay, is that what you were looking for? Cool. All right, so this gives us the main body of the Qatar and we kind of missed the end here and that's okay. We need to fill in kind of these shapes next. And so I'm gonna go ahead and draw those. And if we look at this in box mode, you can see that it's it's kind of crazy in box mode, but that's that's okay. It's kind of working for us right now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that slide. Um, we're going to talk about box mode and smooth mode uh, a lot going forward. And typically speaking, I like to say box mode is for modeling and smooth mode is for evaluating and tweaking. But in this case, we're getting really good results out of smooth mode. So I may stay mostly in smooth mode, which kind of goes against everything I believe in, but we'll let it slide for now. All right. So this thing up here comes out to a little point and, and it has a little flat that lays out here, which means that I'm gonna need a patch, even if it's a teeny tiny one in here, right? And when we're modeling in subdies, we wanna think about what would we do if we had to model this out of post-it notes, okay? I mean, think about this, like if each one of these patches was a post-it note, how would you build this thing? That's, that's how you wanna think about things in, in sub-D. And so when you have a sketch, if you just lay this out, like you would lay it out if you were to build it out of post-it notes, that's gonna be pretty close to what your patch layout is. So let's go back to the curve. I'm gonna, again, make sure that my sub D friendly is selected and I'm gonna go one, two, I'm gonna pull down in here, three, and then I'm gonna turn and come up here like this. And then let's edit to get our shape. I'm more interested in keeping the point count kind of under control than I am the exact location of the points. And that seems a little counterintuitive for a designer, but for right now, keeping track of the points and the numbers is really important. So I wanna make sure that we kind of line up when we, when we do things. So I'm gonna put that curve there. I'm gonna draw another one over here. There's construction going on on my street right now. I apologize if you're hearing jackhammers in the background. I'm hoping my noise canceller is doing a good job filtering that out. Between that and my dog that sleeps under my desk and dreams very loudly, I have a lot of stuff to edit out of my videos. 
<laughs> joys of working at home. All right. So that gives us about that shape, and then we need to figure out kind of how these work together. So again, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to copy paste. I'm going to slide this up here like this, and then I'm going to edit so that my points kind of work together. And that copy paste trick is really great because it just gives you uh, a relative assurance that your loft is going to be pretty easy to control. And I'm going to give, I may stitch these together later, but we'll leave them apart for now. So let's see how these lofts do. I'm going to use sub D loft. And those look like they're going pretty well. I've got this edge and that edge, that edge and that edge. That one can go to there. And then we'll figure out what to do in here in the middle. But I'm pretty happy with that. I am going to add a segment down the middle because I want to be able to adjust whether that cups in or out. So I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And then I'm going to shut off all my points and then turn just these on so I don't get lost. Again, try to use fewer points, pull them farther. That's, that's kind of the name of the game. All right, let's lock these. Those look all right. This edge probably needs to be a little farther out here. I may need to do a little bit of adjusting there. Let's see what happens if I add. I feel a little better about that because those are closer, those are closer, and then I want to add a, a shape down the middle and then say, okay. So now we need to talk about like, what do we do next? And if I go to box mode, and then I'm going to select my curves and hide them because I don't need them anymore. Now we need to talk about like, how do we make, how do we fill in the center? And the easiest way to do this would be to just bridge. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bridge. Let's see. I want to bridge kind of this, these two edges. And I'd like to bridge these two edges, but then that's going to leave me a triangle down here. And I don't like that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this shift control, double click. I'm going to go to sub D and I'm going to add an edge. And I'm going to do that using the insert edge tool. I'm going to pull that down to about there. And then I'm going to bridge these two. And I'm going to, I want that to be fairly flat. So I may stay with one segment. <clears throat> I don't have an, uh, an additional segment down here. So I, I may stick with one segment or I may throw one in because I can always take it out later and say, okay. And then I may throw one more segment in here, shift, double click on the edge and insert an edge down like that. And then that gives me Helps if I actually stick it there. There we go. And then that gives me equal number of patches here. So I can do this and I can bridge. And I'm not going to do a second segment. I'm just going to do that. And you can see it's starting to kind of come together. Now, in this case, I may want to pull this edge down a little bit so that I can get some room in here. And I may pull this edge in like that. And I may pull this one up a little bit. We're just arranging all these little, all these little patches so that they are approximately where we want them to be. And you can see how we kind of like this goes to here. So maybe we want to pull this one. That one's probably in the right spot. So let's pull this one over here. You'll get, as you get better at sub D, you'll start to be able to read this stuff and you'll be able to say, oh, okay, I know where all of this stuff goes, you know? And in this case, like 
this is going to go over here and this is going to go over here that might be a little bit of a weird transition we'll need to see and this one got really thin let's see it looks like it even inverted on itself which is one of the nice things about box mode is you can see what's going on and it looks like let's trace this edge that's okay that's okay but it's really really narrow and i don't necessarily like that so let's let's straighten that out a little bit there we go that way we can actually see what the quads are doing and what they look like Same thing over here. Sub demodeling is a little fiddly. It's it's something that requires a lot of kind of back and forth and and picking at it and things like that. And it looks like we've got one, two, three, four. That's our four edges, but I don't really like how that is laid out. So I'm gonna hold this. We don't want we don't want stuff crossing over itself. And we we try to avoid like really crazy long stretchy stuff, but in the final product, as in, in, as we're kind of getting there, you can still pick at that, and you can still have, uh, you know, we can kind of start there, but we want to end up with something that's a little bit more balanced. So let's start bridging stuff together again. I'm going to bridge these two. I'm going to just do one segment. And you can see how the layout is starting to kind of make sense starting to kind of capture the layout the topology of the layout is starting to kind of capture the design intent he said hopefully we'll see when i flip it over to uh smooth what happens ridge these guys and then i've got one one, two, three, I can come that way and get four. And then, so I think that'll give me two quads. So I can bridge these two. We'll see how this works like that. All right, so if we go to smooth mode, we can see what our basic layout looks like. And you can see that edge that I added down here kind of tortured that shape a little bit. So now we've got some adjusting to do where we can start kind of pulling this around to get it back to what we wanted. And this is just kind of the natural ebb and flow of sub D. You kind of go in box, go in smooth, go in box, go in smooth. And I'm pretty happy with the way this is laid out with the exception of these ends here. And I may actually just pull these and use what I've got instead of trying to do something more complicated. Not terrible. Let's get it a little cleaner. Again, if we want softer corners, we pull the points farther apart. If we want sharper corners, we put them closer together. So I'm gonna pull these guys a little farther apart. And that gets us there. And let's do the same thing down here. I'm gonna smooth, switch to box mode. Don't wanna cross it. See that, how that's crossed like that? It's like Ghostbusters. You don't wanna cross the streams. And again, let's pull these a little farther apart. I just want to distribute them a little more evenly so that they transition a little more cleanly. And as I said, the, the more you do this, you'll be able to start kind of reading the box mode and know what it's going to do. So that's our basic layout. That's like our basic patch layout. And then we can look at this and say, okay, well, does this make sense? Could it be that, you know, this patch line and this patch line, maybe those need to go together? 
And if that's the case, then you know we can deal with that. But I think actually I need I need this edge in order to be able to catch my shape, and I need this edge to be able to catch my shape, and I need this edge all the way around here in order to catch my shape too, which means we have to do a little bit of adjusting because this is not where we want it to be. It's a very kind of push and pull kind of modeling style. And in this case, the uh, I'm, I'm building what I like to refer to as a paper doll right now because it's completely and utterly flat. There is no shape to this whatsoever. I'm just trying to lay my topology out and get my patch layout the way I want it. And this seems like a tedious kind of thing to do, but it actually, once you get it laid out, the rest of the process goes really quickly. And I'm actually, to be honest, taking a little bit more time than I would normally do on this. All right, so let's see what we've got. So if we go to that shape here, then that gets us pretty much what we need to do. So let's go and let's grab everything from here to here. So I click the two ends and then double click the middle. And I'm gonna pull, actually I'm gonna do, actually I'm gonna do the whole exterior. I'm gonna do the whole exterior of this thing and I'm just gonna pull it back. And you can see that we're starting to get some form already like that. And then let's do this edge and we can determine whether that form is cupped like that or whether it's pronounced or whether it has a ridge or whatever I want to do. So I'm going to pull it back kind of like that because I kind of have this, I kind of have this vision of this thing having this kind of cup shape all the way around like that. And maybe that's a little bit too much and we can actually adjust it along the way and say, okay, well, maybe it doesn't have a cup shape here. And <clears throat> so maybe this is where your wrist lies. I'm not a guitar player, by the way, just in case anybody's wondering, I'm no, nowhere near that cool. Um, but I do think they have cool shapes and stuff on them. So, and maybe this has a really nice soft transition right there, but then it sharpens up over here like that. And then maybe it flattens out again over here where the controls are. See how you can kind of, once you've got your topology laid out, see how the sculpt and the forms just kind of happen organically. And so now we can start evaluating highlights. And I love rendered mode for this because you can really see what the highlights look like. So if we do paint and do a nice Eddie Van Halen red, rest in peace. Thanks for high school, that was awesome. And then we can start looking at our highlights and say, what does it look like? And if we go over here to our display, we can shut off our sub-D wires and really take a look at what's going on here. And I'm pretty happy with the shape there. That's that's actually kind of exactly what I was going for. Now, I need to determine like what is going to happen here, like where the neck is going to be and all that kind of stuff. But I think that the neck, when it comes in here, is going to knock out most of this stuff. So I'm going to kind of ignore this for the time being because I can always come back and pull. I can always come back and pull these shapes up a little bit. You know, I can grab this edge and just go like that if I want to. But I think I'm going to leave it like this for the time being. And then when the neck goes in, see what this transition looks like, because I have everything I need, right? One, two, three, in order to either make it cup in or out or go up or down or whatever I want to do, depending on how I arrange those three elements together, I can decide, you know, kind of what it wants to do. So let's, let's finish this thing off. And if I just take and double click the entire edge, I get the entire thing and I'm going to grab this extrude dot and I'm going to pull one and then that gives me this edge right one two three 
Now I want to isolate this edge from the back edge. <clears throat> All right. So uh, remember when we talked about the, the curve going back and forth and we wanted to isolate the corners from each other? So I want this corner to be isolated from the back corner, which means I need what? I need one intermediate edge in the center. Oops, I moved it. I wanted to extrude it. There we go. So I'm going to add an edge to the middle of this thing. And then I'm going to finish this off. So I'm going to go one, two, right? So that's my, the, my secondary. And then the three is going to be just bridging this thing back together. So we're going to do that. I'm going to go back into shaded mode and we're going to go into box mode for that. And then we're going to start thinking about like, how do we put this together? I'm going to hide my image because we're working on the back now. And so our basic layout is pretty much there. Now I don't love, I don't love how the box mode is crossing up a little bit. And so we may actually do a little bit of cleanup on that so that it, it's a little bit nicer. Um, I don't like this over here. I would rather it be, you know, kind of something like this. And maybe this needs to be down here, but that's kind of, that's kind of just modeler's choice at this point. I don't like this back here. We will fix that, but let's finish up the back of this thing while we're, while we're doing it. So um, I'm going to bridge. Let's see. Let's, let's follow the same thing that we did on the front. So I tell you what, actually, let's back up a little bit. Ooh, I've got an idea. Let's actually steal the front of this and we'll just use it for the back. So I'm going to pull, I'm going to tap alt, and then I'm going to grab the entire thing and I'm going to, actually, let's mirror it. That's even better. You're like, wow, you don't really rehearse these before. Nope. <laughs> Completely <laughs> make it up on the fly. I want to make sure that I'm doing the same thing that you guys do when somebody walks into your office and says, build this. Um, and I'm going to flatten this. Just squish it flat. And then I'm going to invert hide or use the uh, isolate command. I have a hotkey set up to that. And I'm just going to clean it. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I got to clean up this internal stuff a little bit. Just like this. Now, the, the one of the cool things about being able to copy this stuff and, and use it again is I know that everything is going to line up. I know my front and my back are going to line up. I know that it's going to be super easy to bridge it together. And that way I don't have any conflicts. See all these little crosses? I'm just getting rid of these. I don't have any conflicts when I connect the front and the back together. And so I know that it's all going to line up and that all looks fine. I may pull this a little bit. And it doesn't really matter because this is flat. So the topology doesn't matter as long as it's just not disgusting and crossed up like that. All right. So let's go back, bring this up. And then I can actually take the entire exterior of this and the entire exterior of this, and I can bridge and I can use, I need one edge in the center. So I know I have to have at least one in the center, but I want to have, and I, and I have to decide, like, do I want to be able to control just crown here between, you know, the inside and the outside? And I may just start with that because it's the simplest and that's kind of the goal with sub D, but let's take a look at what we've got. Other than being a little chunky, which we can just go, <laughs> there we go. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that overall. I gotta be honest. That looks, I think that looks pretty cool. Um, I think, I think I don't love this transition down here. So I may just pull that a little bit. See the sculptural, you know, the ease in sculpting as long as you understand what what's doing what and where's going where and what's pulling what. And that's the whole reason that you don't want to add a million points to one of these things. We really want to be pretty, pretty simple. Now, this could probably benefit from being square. So let's just grab, nope, not you. I'm shift control clicking to grab these edges, by the way. If you're on a Mac, that's a command. Shift click. And let's try creasing these and see what happens. 
All right, I feel better about that. That gives me pretty much what I was looking for. I try to stay away from creases. For the most part, you're like, you just put a crease in there. <laughs> yeah, I know they need, they're, they, they serve their purpose when they serve their purpose, but I try to stay away from it. What I usually would do in this case is I would actually bevel and I would, I would put a little round on that thing instead of a hard crease. But in this case, a hard crease is actually justified because I'm going to most likely trim this or do something with it in NURBS at a later date. All right, so let's evaluate this thing a little bit and take a look and see what, you know, what the shapes are doing and and things like that. I think this guy needs to smooth out just a little bit like that. And this looks a little denty. So I may need to move this one a little bit like that and i might need to actually pull this one away a little bit right sharper closer together softer farther apart so now that's softening up really nicely and i may actually want this to be a little sharper maybe that does need to come up and be a little tighter so that this detail is a little bit more prominent. Maybe even this one. And I'm using these, these uh, for lack of a better term, I like to call these little, these transform waffles. <laughs> that's not what they're called, but that's what I call them. And these allow it to only move in X, in, in Z, Y space. Whereas if I roll around here, this one only allows it to go in X, Y space. And then this one only allows it to go in, in I guess, X, Y space in this plane. So they, they follow the C plane that they're, they're with. And so it keeps me from, I can move it around like this, but it keeps me from moving it in or out, right? So it just stays in the same plane that, that, the, that the transform icon is in. I guess that's a better term for it, is a transform icon. And then, not in love with that, so I'm just gonna keep noodling that just a little bit. Maybe that fades out towards the end. But it's fun, you can sit there and sculpt this stuff and just say, ooh, these are shapes that I wasn't able to make before. You know? If this edge is not sharp enough, what I can do is I can add an edge in here, see how that thing sharpens up because now I've got See where my one, two, three is? One, two, three down here. Instead of being all the way over here, it's up here. I can also bias this if I grab this edge and I slide it. I can slide the edge towards the front, which sharpens the front, or I can slide it towards the back, which sharpens the back. But if I want to keep it in the middle and then sharpen just one side or the other, I need to add an edge. In this case, I may just pull slightly forward bias and leave it like that. And then I need to decide like how much crown the edge of this thing is supposed to have. And I can do that just by shift dragging on a scale icon, just adding a little puff to that. Or I can do it selectively by just pulling up in an individual area. I think I kind of want this backside to be really nice and soft. And I may actually even pull this a little bit more like that so that it's got that kind of forearm space on it. Kind of seeing how this works now. It's starting to make sense. And then we can go into box mode and we can see, okay, now what's really going on? And we may wanna just clean up a little bit of this stuff. See how these, this is crossing over each other? That's usually not a great idea. So let's pull this down. Let's pull this out a little bit. It's much easier to kind of keep track of in box mode. So that's why I say modeling gets done here and editing gets done elsewhere. 
you'll get to the point again where you just you'll just be able to start reading this see with this big jag in here i don't like that that's not cool so let's do something like this and get this to flow better how are we doing for time 950 about an hour in all right so i think i think that's probably about enough picking at the at the guitar body the doom boom see what i did there Let's call that approximately done. Now, obviously, there's a million things that we could still noodle on it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna call that about done. Let's just take a look at the front and see what we've got. Make sure that we don't have anything crazy going on. I think this should probably flow better with that. Kind of read through it and say yeah, maybe that needs to flow a little better. The idea is to get your box mode super nice and organized so it's all nice and clean and it all kind of flows nicely together. And that will give you a nice clean smooth mode. Clean smooth mode, clean, clean box mode, clean smooth mode. That's the way it goes. All right, everybody got the general idea here? Let's talk about the neck and I'm going to try and pull the neck off pretty quick. Let's uncross those. And then these are crossed down here. I got to fix that too. No crossing. We don't want any crossing. Shift control clicking the point on the edge. You can turn them on and off, but I find it's faster if you just sub object select them and move on. And then let's look from front view and see, I don't like this, see this chip down here? I don't like that, so let's fix it. Everything should be kind of clean and organized and make sense. You don't want any like crazy tortured forms. And I'm actually going to grab this entire edge by shift control dragging, and I'm gonna scale this to zero to flatten it out. Go back. Pretty good, pretty happy with that. Might maybe a few little adjustments here just with nudge, but that gives us a pretty good basis to work from. And then obviously we can make it, you know, late Elvis style, or we can make it a little skinnier. Shouldn't pick up Elvis. He couldn't help it. He just like mayonnaise a lot. All right, <clears throat> so we got that. We'll call that done. I'm gonna throw this on a layer. And then I'm going to lock it for now. And then let's lay out the neck. Actually, I'm going to hide it for now. And let's lay out the neck. And the neck kind of comes through here. And I'm going to do this with a, um, I'm going to start with a curve. I'm going to make it degree one for now because I want it to be a straight line. And see how it switched to sub D friendly? No, that's because sub D friendly curves have to have more more than two points, but I'm gonna start with just a straight line for now. And then I'm gonna do another straight line down here. And then what I'm gonna do is rebuild these because they're set up right. And I, let's, and I'm gonna say I need maybe, let's call it like for now, let's call it like five. And we're gonna change the degree. It's gonna automatically change to three because I've got sub D friendly check down here and say, okay. Now, the cool thing about that is there's still straight lines. I used, I let Rhino pick where the points are gonna be. So now if I loft these, sub D loft, whoops, nope. I can decide how many points that I want out of this. So I'm gonna adjust the shape segments and I'm gonna go up, let's say five. That should be about right. And I am gonna check the corners so that it creases the corners of the output. And I'm gonna say, okay. Now to lay out the, the headstock here, I'm gonna just shift control, drag the edge, and I'm gonna just extrude out. Now we've got a corner here, right? So I need one, two, three to make a corner. I've got another corner up here, so I need steal that one, two, three. 
I've got a corner down here, so I have to figure out how those transition. So I've got a I've got an in out transition here, and I've got an in out transition here. So I need to think about how those work together. So I'm going to stretch this one out first, just using the extrude dot. So that's going to be my that's going to be kind of my middle point, right? Because I'm going to steal this one one two, and my third one's got to be up here. So I'm going to do this like that. And then this one, I'm going to use this, but I'm going to pull it way down here to there. And I'm going to pull this one there. See how you can kind of read that? That's your one, two, three, one, two, three. Now I have to turn this corner one, two, three. So I'm going to go two and three because I'm going to steal one from before. Pull that up there. Pull that up there. Pull this down here. Pull that over there. Now, I've got a little bit of a complicated situation because this is dead straight, but this has a little bit of an arc. So that means I have to have a, 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 an edge in the center, right? So I'm going to pull out to something like that. I'm going to just scale it down. And then I'm going to pull this probably down there because the longer that edge is, the straighter it's going to be, right? And then I've got uh, another curve transition kind of thing going on here. So I'm going to pull this like that and then one more to the end. And that should give me everything I need. We'll see. I've never built one of these before, so I'm making this up as I go along. All right, so let's switch it to let's switch it to box mode. And it looks like it's the whole thing is creased, so I'm going to grab the entire thing and uncrease it. Uncrease it. <laughs> there we go. And then we can see actually that edge I want to keep creased. They're just these points. So that it stays flat like that. And then you can see that that because we kind of followed that rule of three, it got really close to what we needed. So let's just make a few little adjustments here. See how that, if you think about just three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, just keep saying that to yourself. That will keep you from making corners that are just crazy with millions and millions of points in them. And then this guy we can pull out like that. And then let's go back to box mode and just make sure that we haven't introduced anything crazy because this back of this thing is almost dead straight. So watch this. I'm going to take a curve and I'm going to snap it so that I have a reference. And then I'm just going to pull this up and snap it to that edge. Okay, you can use the align command to do that, but uh, I, I just use a little reference geometry and then that's just dead flat on the back. All right. Now, the other cool thing about this is the neck on these things tends to tends to have a bend in it. And so I actually may want to add one more edge that gives me the opportunity to bend right there. I'm going to do this in box mode. Actually, looking at this in box mode, that edge actually is probably where I'll bend it. So I think I'm going to leave it alone. All right, so let's... Let's go ahead and add some thickness to this. Double click. Uh, get rid of my curves. Double click the edge. Shift control, double click to get the edge. And I'm going to pull my thickness off of this thing. And this is a crease right now, and I'm going to leave it as such. This one, I don't want to be creased, so I'm going to uncrease it. And then let's just go ahead and bridge up the back of this thing. So let's go one, two three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to just bridge. And I am going to use two segments because I do want to be able to control the roundness on the back of this. Let's see, question here. Brand new to CAD don't, and Rhino specifically, don't have experience to understand sub-D in context, con context of comparing it to NURBS or other shape surfaces. Do you have any general advice on what's better to use sub-D, when it's better to use sub-D, and when it's better to use NURBS? Is it a shapes issue? Is it dependent on what you're going to ultimately do in the model, like draw up blueprints in case of a boat, send a 3D printer, etc.? Um, NURBS and sub-D are 100% compatible. So think of, think of 
subd as a sculpting tool and think of NURBS as a as more of a precision tool and we'll talk about as we go forward i need to speed up a little bit to cover everything that i want to cover here but um, we'll think about uh, sub D as being the thing that we use to handle all of the sculptural bits. And we'll think about NURBS when we need to get precise and start adding, you know, very mechanical shapes and things like that. Now you can sculpt in, in NURBS. And if you go back to any of the videos I've done over the last seven years, you can see that, you know, we can certainly add sculptural elements in NURBS, but sub D just makes it so much easier. So let's bridge the back of this up and close it up. I'm going to pick probably that and that should be one two three four five six edges so i'm going to go one two three four five six edges there if i counted correctly and then i'm going to bridge this edge and this edge and then you can see that there is uh, there's a hole at the end of this thing because I don't have, I don't have uh, uh, an edge down the center here. So I have a choice to make. I can either get rid of this edge and leave that as an end gon, which is a which is a five sided object. And in order to get that to close up, I'll actually delete it and then use the fill command. which will fill that back in with an N-GON like that. And, or I can, I can bridge from like here to here. And in this case, it looks like that has an extra edge in there, which I didn't want. And then I have to just decide how I'm going to handle this three-sided this three three-sided object. Whether I stitch this all together, I can stitch these two together like that. That gives me a little bit of a weird shape on the back, and maybe this edge goes away. And then I've got kind of a weird I've got a weird hanging edge down there, so maybe I need to think about. Maybe I have a triangle that comes across like this, where I connect this one to this one. I'm okay with that. I think that'll work out all right. If I need to, I can always add an, a secondary edge right here. I could take this edge and do this and make that into a quad. That works okay. So let's adjust this a little bit. And then we've got pretty much the back of our object. Now, there's a heel down here, which, from what I understand, guitar folks are pretty pretty persnickety about. So let's go ahead and just pull that out. I'm going to just sh command shift click or shift shift control click these two edges, and I'm just going to extrude it. And then I'm going to actually get rid of, uh, or actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch. Well, let's see. Let's see, what are we going to do? We're going to get rid of this crease for sure. Ah, so this edge right here, because we don't have a center line down here, we've got an orphan kind of right here. So let's go ahead and add an edge on this. Why not? Let's do that. So I'm going to just start here and I'm going to just go right down the middle of this thing. Not gonna let me do it. All right, so let's do it this way. There we go. So I'm gonna put an edge down here. That that actually is gonna help with this issue we had on the back side. I'm gonna attach that there, get rid of this one, and get rid of this one because I didn't like it in the first place. Nothing personal, but. And then that I'm going to get rid of. 
and then we're going to bridge these two edges and these two edges. And then that way we've got a much more cohesive piece here. And I'm going to crease this edge because I want that to stay sharp. There we go. So that gives us our, our kind of our heel shape, right? And we can adjust the heel shape by pulling this either in or out so it can be softer or flatter, right? So it can either be a rounder shape or it can be a flatter shape. Super adjustable. And then the back of this thing, we can decide whether this shape here, you know, how gradual that tapers in or out. And I think maybe we'll kind of do something like that. And I'm sure there's a guitar player in the in the audience that's like cringing right now going, oh my God, that's not the way that that thing's supposed to be shaped. Well, okay, <laughs> I'm not a guitar player. Build your own and then show me how to do it. That'd be awesome. I would love to see it. Probably would want to see some sort of creasing on this edge here. so that the back of this thing is flat, I'm assuming. So that way this, this whole kind of headstock is flat. And you can see how that just kind of fades out right there. And we could, we could bevel this and triangle it off, which might be a more interesting way of doing this. Let's add a little bevel there. And then let's go to box mode and see what kind of mess we made. And I'm going to get rid of these creases now because I don't need them because I beveled it. And let's see what that looks like. I actually like that better. See how that fades out? And we can control the fade by how many edges we delete. So depending on where that triangle happens, it basically controls how that fades in or out. You like that? All right, so let's go to box mode. This is gonna be the, the edge that we're gonna bend around because the top of this thing definitely has a bend on it. So I'm gonna select all of this and I'm gonna just rotate like that. And the cool thing about this is say, say you save this thing flat, right? Say that you're a custom guitar builder and you build one neck, all right? Now that you have this neck built, you can do anything you want with it. If you want the heel to be sharper, you can pull that there. If you want it to be softer, you can pull that there. If you want it to be in farther like that, you can do that. It's all set up for you to do whatever you want, however you want, and, and manage these transitions however you want. Do you want a neck that bends like this? You can do it, right? So you'd save this thing out as a piece. And then depending on your, on your um, application, you would bring it back in and then, and then do whatever you want with it. So let's bring our guitar body back and see how these two fit together. And in this case, the body is probably needs to be more like this. Anybody who's ever built one of these things out of wood is going, oh my God, that was easy. <laughs> and now we have to decide like, okay, how do these two things fit together? And in this case, we can take this and I can just push it a little bit. And then I might want to get rid of this crease now, or maybe just, I don't know. Maybe it's a matter of I need to pull the heel out a little bit like that. And then I want this part of the heel to be right like that. And then we can start adjusting these guys to work together. Oops, not that. And we can just decide how these two are going to mate.
And this is a situation that if you were building this thing for real, you would probably CNC this thing out and then you would probably hand finish this, right? But if you didn't want to, you could always just pull this down and manage that transition like that. See how we can we can visually see what that that shape is going to be. I kind of digging that. I don't know about you guys, but all right, let's pull this up. Start tucking these guys inside. And I have no idea what I'm doing as far as like, is this, is this, you know, actually anatomically correct for guitar or whatever. I'm just, I'm just a demo guy. I did a bicycle demo for some for T spines years ago and I got hate mail for weeks afterwards. That's not how a bicycle frame is built. Same thing with sunglasses. Sunglasses people are very serious. They were very upset at my sunglasses demo. I was like, well, I guess. I guess I reached some people if they were impassioned enough to call me an idiot. Not the first time I've been called that in my design career. <clears throat> All right, so then we can just decide kind of how that blends together. And we can, you know, we can fiddle with this endlessly. One one nice trick I like is to change the gumball and then use scale. It's a nice, soft, kind of progressive way to adjust things. And I might just tuck that edge. Boop, like that. All right, let's call that done. And in this case, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the heel out just a hair so that it has just like a little teeny reveal in the back. And then we can always like, you know, when we get down the road, we can just decide if we if we like that or not. And if we don't, we can always just hack it off. So at this point, I would say, okay, this is probably done. You know, we're probably done with the sub B part of this. And I would do this. I'd say sub D bits. I would grab this entire thing and I would flip it over here and say copy objects to layer. And then I would hide this layer. That way I've got my sub D bits saved. I would then take these and say two NURBS. And I would say delete the input objects, yes. And I would let them roll into NURBS. These are now Rhino polysurface objects. The cool thing is they are watertight. If they're built, if they were built watertight, they're watertight. So that means that if I want to do stuff like this, where I say subtract this using that, it works very nicely, right? And I know guitar people are cringing, going, oh my God, you cut all the way through it. That's not how you do it. I know, I don't care. <laughs> do your own demo. <laughs> We're all friends here, man. I'm just trying to show you how to use the tools. All right, take this and I'm gonna shut off my ISO curve density so that is a little easier to manage. And then just for fun, I'm going to bring back these bits that Alexander built. Not those, these. And then I can just quickly mash this stuff together. And I have no idea whether this stuff is going to line up or not. Actually, not bad. I should have done, I should have bent the neck first. So let's do this. See, this is why we keep the sub D bits when we do something dumb. Lay that right there. And then, oop, don't do it again. Rotate this. There we go.
All right, and that's approximately where we would want it to be. We could always adjust that stuff later, move it around as we wanted, but you get the general idea of kind of where we're going with this, right? And so then it would just be a matter of going and adding these individual bits. And now that I've bent this, I'm gonna turn this back to NURBS. And I'm gonna hide my ISO curves. And then this usually has a, a secondary piece of wood on top of it. So I'm gonna shift command click this and I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna tap alt and I'm gonna copy that face. And then I'm gonna go to the front view. Now we're in NURBS, right? This is just, this is just NURBS land now. And I'm gonna just trim it. And I know that it fits perfectly because I stole it from here. So I'm gonna stick it back where I found it. Relocate the gumball and then stick it right there. And then I'm gonna just extrude it. And that gives me my second piece that all this stuff starts to fit on. Then I can start putting together my, you know, I could start putting together my rendering, so to speak. If I come in here to render view, then I can start saying, okay, well, this is red and this is maple and this is whatever that is. And then I can start, you know, assembling this thing into something that really starts to look like a guitar really pretty quickly. All right. And I think at an hour 18, I think I'm probably going to call it here and say that you guys pretty much get the gist of what's going on here. But if there's any questions or there's anything that you saw that was like really baffling, I'm more than happy to um, answer any questions if you have any questions. And while we're answering questions, I'll just keep picking at it. Any questions on anything you saw so far? Anything that didn't make sense or you want to see again? One layer on is a cool command because it allows you to just isolate stuff. Unfortunately, there's not a all layers back on. <laughs> I wish there was. <laughs> there's a one layer off, but there's not a, okay, now turn everything back on. Something like that. These pickups need to go forward. Nope. This is a super detailed model, by the way. If you grab this thing from GrabCAD, it's actually kind of fun to play with because it's really, really super detailed. He even had like the wiring and stuff in it, which was kind of cool. And it was a NURBS. It was a Rhino file. That's one of the things I thought was really cool. All right, let's do the... Let's do the bottom pickup first real quick, and then we'll, I think we're about done here. All right, any other questions? Anything that you saw that didn't make sense that you want to see again or anything like that? I think this is going to get us close enough for what we need to do today. All right, if I do this and say, woo, look how great it looks. <laughs> Isn't it great? <laughs> Don't look too closely. <laughs> but in an hour and 20 minutes, we modeled this whole thing, right? And that's his original neck. Nope, this is his neck, sorry. That's the neck that he built. That's the neck that we built. You can see all the bits and pieces for the back of us that you could assemble. All right, any questions? Uh, could we have a link to basic operation and navigations demos? Yes, if you go to Rhino3D.com, learn, 
There is interface basics. There's a really simple modeling a water bottle, modeling a glass, which gets you talking about rendering. There's the level one manual, the level two manual, basic sub D modeling, and then some, some simpler demos if you want to follow along. And then as you get uh, as you get some confidence built up, you'll want to switch over and go straight to the YouTube video, YouTube channel, which is where all the stuff is going to get placed. And then look at the getting started Rhino for windows. The full playlist has, you know, all these demos that we've done over the years. It gives all sorts of projects that you can work through from really simple stuff up to, you know, much more complicated things, um, that, uh, that you should be able to jump into. So uh is it possible to rotate view around object after deselecting them um yeah absolutely if i'm understanding this correctly there's nothing selected right now and we can rotate around it is that what i'm i may be misunderstanding your question um in revit is it uh in revit it's helpful but in rhino i have to keep objects selected no it, i think there's a there's a preference here i think what you're what you're looking for is um where is that might be modeling aids um where is that it's in here somewhere um Ah, I'll find it somewhere. Um, but there, there's an there's an option for whether you rotate around whether the whether the world rotates or whether it's actually the the object itself. Um, it might be in Gumball. Hang on. General modeling aids. Rotate around. Rot rotate view around Gumball. Um, so if I pick this, see how it rotates around the Gumball. If it's not picked, it remembers kind of what the last location was, and so I tend to I tend to use Gumball as a rotational anchor, so to speak, and then when you shut it off, the whole model kind of rotates. Is that what you're Is that what you're referring to? Um, I think if you move the the object from zero 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 and try rotating, you'll see my problem. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would rotate it just around Gumball, and then. Um, it should, I know there's a setting to do that, but it's it's evading me at the moment. Um, send me an email, uh, send an email to tech at mcneil.com and ask that question and I'll find somebody whose brain is functioning better than mine is right now. Um, there There is a setting for that. I know there is. I just can't remember where it is right this minute. All right. Um, any other questions? Let's see what happens if we render this. Should be pretty snappy on this machine. That's all right. We've got some stuff crashing in here that we need to fix. But for the most part, that's fairly convincing for an hour and a half, other than these floating bits down here and <laughs> this stuff not being aligned. But OK. Any other questions? Can we see the video? Um, yes, that'll be, on, uh, that'll be on our YouTube channel. I'm going to put it together right after we finish up. And it'll get posted in this Getting Started Rhino for Windows playlist, which I will put the link in the chat. Um, give me an hour or two to get it. I don't think we have too much editing to do other than me clearing my throat and, and uh, stuff like that. But um, I should be able to get it edited and put up pretty quick. So hopefully by the end of the day, I'll have it up here. Any other questions? Is there a sub D equivalent or a good way to sculpt in this way in Rhino 6? Um, Clyu is a plugin. That's a, a company. I think um, I think Gemvision owns these guys now. But Clyu is a plugin for doing sub D work. It's a paid plugin though. So for the money that you would pay to buy the plugin, you can upgrade to seven and get it for free. Just saying. 
<laughs> not to take anything away from these guys they do good work but you might as well might as well upgrade and get it for free right now by the way if you're not aware of this seven is shipping and there is a promotion right now for 395 for upgrade if you have a v6 license and this is to march 10th so you want to want to get on that after march 10th it goes up to 595 for an upgrade any other questions if not i'll let you go thank you for hanging with me we went a little little longer than i was hoping but hope it was useful Awesome. Good. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you for coming. It always makes it more fun when people show up. It's a lot more fun than talking to myself <laughs> in a room and feel like there is somebody actually out there listening, which is nice. Um, and uh, if you have any suggestions for stuff you want to see in the future, go ahead and and uh, and send them to tech at mcneil.com and you can make it attention to me. My name's Kyle, K-Y-L-E. I'm the only one. I'm the only Kyle in the company, so it's easy to find me. Awesome. All right, everybody. Thanks you very much. I'm Kyle Houchins. This is Getting Started Rhino for Windows, Sub D Guitar. Enjoy, be safe, go make great stuff. Thanks, everybody.